Hello, hello, hello. Time for another dose of metrology. And today I was thinking that we could discuss about when you are installing a measurement system in, in particular in industrial environments. Then that measurement system will be exposed to a lot of disturbances stemming from other electrical installations in that environment. Could be motors or whatever. And uh, those uh, disturbances are propagated through the common uh, power uh, supply network. It could be propagation through uh, electromagnetic radiation and so on. And in addition to this problem, you may have other kinds of embedded electronic equipment and they could also uh, kind of disturb each other. So the, the topic of uh, today's lecture will be about EMC, electromagnetic compatibility. And the outline of this talk uh, will be uh, capacitive coupled disturbances and inductive coupled disturbances. And we will discuss about coupling through common impedance, electromagnetic radiation, and uh, problems related to ground connections. EMC, electromagnetic compatibility, means the ability for different electronic equipment to operate in the same electromagnetic environment. Immunity requirements means the ability for a system to resist the influence of disturbances coming from other equipment. And emission requirements means the level of allowed generated disturbances of an equipment. This means that the ability for equipment to operate in the same environment is divided into two areas. Immunity, which means the equipment's ability to resist disturbance from other equipment and emission uh, which means the the allowed level of disturbance that your equipment can send out and indeed indeed you are required by the law to follow certain rules for immunity and emission and uh, the methods for measure and analyze and the allowed levels are usually defined in standards standards speci specific for different kind of, of areas of, of applications and uh, those standards are referred to from uh, directives directives uh, written by and decided by the European Commission and the directive uh, in this case is called the EMC directive and then the the national authorities are are obliged to implement this as laws in, in every member countries in the European uh, Union. But I will now move on to the more technical part of this uh, presentation. Uh, disturbances, they can be coupled from one equipment to another in different ways. And first of all, we have capacitive coupling, and then we have inductive coupling, we have the common impedance, we have electromagnetic radiation, and we have different currents in grounding system. And uh, my idea now is that I would like to traverse this list of different mechanisms and give you an, uh, an insight in uh, the uh, technical background, how this coupling is happening in your system and what you can actually do in order to, to uh, suppress and defeat this coupling. Capacitive coupled disturbance comes from the fact that there are parts from two different systems that will act as the electrodes of a capacitor. So let's start to have a look at some general expressions for a, a capacitor. And a capacitor uh, in this case is formed by two wires that are uh, passing by each other in parallel with a distance of, of capital D and they have a diameter of D. And there is an expression that is showing the uh, capacitance per meter for this capacitor. Secondly, we have another kind of coax cable that has two conductors, one circular uh, outer conductor. And there is a, a inside the circular conductor, there is this the uh, uh, electricum and the inner second wire. And the inner wire has the, the uh, radius of R and the outmost uh, circular. Uh, circular uh, conductor has a radius of uh, capital R and you have the corresponding uh, uh, capacitance per meter given by this expression here. This arrangement here is showing uh, the capacitive coupling of disturbance and 
this uh, wire here is a disturbing wire and the disturbance in this case is generated by this uh, uh, voltage source. And there is a signal wire that is connected to the ground through this uh, impedance Z. And we can draw a, 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 a equivalent circuit for this uh, system setup. Here we have the uh, um, disturbance signal generator and we have the impedance uh, through this capacitance between those two wires and we have the impedance of the ending of this signal wire. And then the dis disturbance voltage that is generated uh, over this uh, uh, impedance on the signal wire, the uh, disturbance voltage that is actually stemming from the voltage that is generated by this uh, uh, disturbing uh, signal source is given by the voltage division over uh, uh, Z and impedance ZC. ZC. Mm. And here is another arrangement, but now we have the the uh, circular uh, secondary screen wire at, at the outmost in order to suppress the capacitive coupling. So this is a recommended method for suppressing the capacitive coupling. And now we have a capacitance between uh, the disturbing wire and the shield of this uh, signal wire. The signal wire is uh, is uh, located inside uh, this shielding uh, circular wire. And in between there is this dielectricum and there is a capacitance between the signal wire and the outer shield as well as also a, a, an impedance for the connection to the, from the shield to the ground. And now we will again make a, a, a corresponding equivalent circuit diagram for this setup. And we have the, the signal generator uh, and we have the uh, uh, impedance that is stemming from this capacitance between the, the disturbing wire and the shield and we have the uh, impedance that is connected the shield to the ground and we have the uh, impedance that is stemming from the capacitance between the signal wire and the outmost shielding uh, connector and in the end we have the uh, impedance said that is ending of the signal wire and then, of course, if we uh, are using here a very a good connection, a low impedance for this uh, said uh, shield uh, to the ground, then we can almost completely uh, reduce the uh, coupling of uh, the dis disturbance from the signal generator to the signal wire ending of, of said. Inductive coupled disturbance comes from the fact that there are a closed loop electrical conductors from two different systems and they are close enough to uh, form a mutual uh, inductance and act as a transformer. Have a look at this uh, sketch, simple sketch here. We have two wires where the, the upper wire here um, is acting as the, the uh, noise disturbance wire and there is a, a current flowing through this wire from terminal A to B. And then there will be a, a corresponding uh, voltage generated induced on the secondary wire uh, with the terminal C and D. E. And we can we can draw the uh, corresponding uh, equivalent circuit diagram as a transformer where you have a mutual inductance M and there is a current flowing through uh, the terminal A and B and there will be an induced voltage uh, on the output of terminal C and D. E. And this induced voltage is given then by the mutual uh, inductance uh, times the time derivative of the current on the, uh, the uh, s disturbing wire. And there are always a mutual inductance M between two wires acting like a transformer. But then if we kind of increase the distance between the wires, we can also reduce the magnetic coupling and thus the also reduce the mutual inductance M and the propagation of the disturbance will be reduced, of course. So let us now project this uh, coupling mechanism and this problem onto a real um, measurement system. Or at least it is a principal sketch of a measurement system. In this case you see the sensor here. It really looks like a microphone, but it could be a microphone, of course. And there is a, 
a receiving system part of the measurement system that we call an amplifier. And there is a voltage on the output of this sensor uh, that is supposed to be transferred to the input of this uh, amplifier. And both the sensor and the amplifier has a common ground. And along this uh, signal wire from the sensor to the amplifier there is a noise disturbing wire that has a current flowing through this wire. And then uh, due to the current that is flowing through this wire from terminal A to B then there will be a current in the opposite direction uh, induced on the signal wire. Mm -hmm. We can draw a corresponding equivalent circuit diagram so we have the voltage uh, generator that is corresponding to the voltage generated by the sensor uh, and you have the input of the uh, uh, amplifier. And there is a signal wire that is transferring the sensor signal uh, to the input of the amplifier using a common ground with the amplifier and the sensor. But on the way there is a transformer with a mutual uh, inductance of M. Uh, and the uh, disturbing current through terminal A and B from this wire is coupled through this mutual uh, inductance onto the uh, sensor wire that is transferring the sensor signal to the uh, input of the amplifier. And what happens now is that the input voltage to the amplifier is equal to the voltage of the sensor plus this UD that is the result of the induced voltage on the secondary winding of this transformer. So the induced disturbance UD is added to the sensor signal this way. And as you might have already guessed, uh, it is the use of a screen wire that is the solution to the problem also for inductive coupled disturbances. So have a look at this simple uh, system sketch. Again we see the sensor um, that is generating an, a sensor voltage on the output and it is connected through the uh, a sensor wire, sensor signal wire to the input of the amplifier. And both the amplifier and the sensor is connected through a common ground. Uh, we again have this uh, wire that has a current flowing uh, generating a disturbance through a mutual inductance uh, with uh, the, uh, the sensor uh, signal through the inductance of MA. But now in between there is also an additional uh, what we call a screen wire and uh, be aware of that this, this screen wire is connected to ground at both ends to allow a current I2 to flow th through this screen wire and it is flowing in the opposite direction then compared to uh, the disturbing current. And there is of course also mutual inductance uh, between the disturbing uh, wire and the screen wire as well as also between the screen wire and the uh, sensor wire. And the whole idea now is that the current that is flowing through the screen wire will balance and, and delete uh, the impact, uh, suppress the impact of the uh, common uh, inductance between the uh, disturbing wire and the sensor wire. But have a look at the corresponding uh, equivalent circuit diagram for this system setup. We see here the input of the amplifier uh, and we have the output sensor voltage and the sensor voltage is fed through the uh, sensor wire to the input of the amplifier but in between there are two mutual inductance forming a transformer with the mutual inductance MA and MB and the mutual inductance MA is with the disturbing uh, wire and then there will be a uh, mutual inductance also with the screen wire uh, that will be a current that is flowing in the opposite direction and a uh, a mutual inductance MB. And then the idea is that if MB is, uh, not MB is, but if the screen wire is uh, located very close to the sensor wire, then you can assume that MA and MC are, are kind of equal and will balance. So that the contribution uh, from the uh, mutual inductance MA and MB will be equal, but equal also in the opposite direction. So then we can assume that the, the uh, voltage that is induced over uh, the output of transformer MA and transformer MB will be in opposite polarity so that the resulting, uh, com resulting voltage will be close to zero. That is the whole idea behind the suppress suppression 
of uh, uh, induced uh, disturbance over this mutual inductance. And in fact, a almost complete suppression of the inductive couple disturbance can be achieved if there is a screen that is surrounding uh, the signal wire. Uh, typical arrangement to use for this is these kind of uh, cables that are called coax cable that has a, a, a screen wire that is surrounding the, the uh, uh, signal wire in, in a circular shape uh, or tube, tube shape. But then of course, as I said also before, it is important that the, the screen uh, of this cable then must be connected to ground at both ends to allow current to flow through the, the screen wire. If two sensors or more sensors, wire connected sensors, are sharing the same uh, wire for uh, their feedback currents, then this common wire will represent a common impedance and over this common impedance there will be a, a shared portion of the sensor voltages that are shared in between those sensors, among those sensors. And this kind of mechanism for disturbing each other uh, among the sensors uh, I would like to show you now on the next couple of slides. So have a look at this uh, principal sketch for the system setup where we have like two amplifiers, amplifier 1 and amplifier 2 where their inputs u in 1, u in 2 respectively and their corresponding input impedances z1, z2 and we have two sensors uh, sensor 1 and sensor 2 and each one of the sensors sensor 1 is then connected to amplifier 1 input and sensor 2 is connected to amplifier 2 input uh, um, the system is grounded at one single point and there are two uh, separate signal wires from sensor 1 to sensor 2 but there is one single wire for the feedback current uh, and then we can draw the corresponding uh, equivalent circuit diagram here below and we see the different uh, the two different sensor voltages as the uh, voltage generators u1 and u2 and then you have the input impedances to the uh, amplifiers z1 and z2 and there is a common uh, impedance in the feedback uh, wire uh, z shield and you have two currents i1 and i2 that are stemming from the two different sensors and then it means that over this common uh, wire and the common uh, impedance z shield there are current i1 plus i2 and we can now apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law on this circuit, on this loop. And we have uh, U1 uh, minus U in line uh, over the input of the amplifier 1 minus uh, this Z shield uh, multiplied with I1 plus I2 is equal to zero. And then we can solve for the input voltage to the amplifier 1. U in 1 will be equal to uh, U1 uh, minus Z shield uh, times uh, I1 plus I2 and in the in the ideal case uh, this term here should be equal to zero and the corresponding input to uh, amplifier 1 should be equal to the output voltage U1 of sensor 1 but now we have a contribution here that corresponds partly from uh, the sensor uh, 1 but also one part is corresponding to sensor uh, number 2. So the conclusion that we can draw from this is that uh, the transmission for sensor 1 and sensor 2 are disturbing each other through this uh, common impedance cell shield. And what can we do about this? In this case uh, we have been using separate uh, feedback wires for each one of the sensors. So sensor 1 uh, have two wires connected to the input am amplifier 1 and sensor 2 has two wires directly connected to the input of amplifier 2 and then there is a separate screen wire that are uh, connected to ground at both ends so using these pairs of wires for each sensor allow for separate return current wires which solves the, solves the problem and then the shield here can be connected to ground at both ends which allow you to suppress both inductive coupled disturbances as well as also capacitive coupled disturbances. 
Electromagnetic radiation is typically stemming from electronic equipment or other kinds of electrical installations where part of this installation, uh, electrical conductors or wires are acting as antennas radiating this field wave out into space. And this field wave is uh, propagating approximately with the speed of light. And the field wave is consisting out of two fields, the electrical field and the magnetic field that are propagating perpendicular to each other and propagating in the same direction. And then uh, we can have antennas depending on uh, which part of the field that we want to uh, sense. Here's a picture of the, the field wave where the magnetic field is uh, colored with red color and the electrical field is colored with blue color. And they are oscillate, both oscillating and propagating in the same direction, but they are oriented in um, perpendicular to each other. And an electrical field is sensed by a piece of wire uh, and it is sensing the electrical uh, field along the wire and where the uh, voltage that is sensed is equal to the electrical field times the length of this antenna. And uh, a magnetic dipole antenna on the other hand is sensing uh, the magnetic field by the area, the loop area of the antenna times the, the time derivate of change of, of this uh, magnetic field strength. And dipole antennas are sensing either magnetic B field or the electrical E field, depending on how we design these antennas. What we see here is a circuit board and along this circuit board there is a wire transferring currents at the radio frequency. And there will be a potential difference along the wire uh, that will cause an electrical field vector and there will be uh, a magnetic field vector perpendicular to this electrical field vector uh, due to the current that's it, that is flowing through the, uh, the uh, wire. So it ends up on the, uh, this circuit board with one field vector of the magnetic field and there is another field vector of the electrical field. And on this circuit board we can see a sensor on one side of the board and on the other side of the board there is the amplifier with a differential voltage input for amplification. <coughs> and the transfer of the sensor signal to the amplifier input are wires along the side of the board. So it means that there will be a, a, an area that will constitute a magnetic dipole antenna. And along the wires uh, from the, the sensor to the amplifier, this wire will act as an uh, electrical dipole antenna. And what is actually then sensed on the input on the amplifier input will be the voltage from the sensor plus the voltage generated by the electrical uh, dipole antenna plus the voltage generated by the magnetic dipole antenna. So an electromagnetic field wave generates disturbance in measurement system. Both the, the electrical field along the sensor signal wire as well as the B field perpendicular to the ground loop area contributes to this disturbance. So this is how an electrical electromagnetic field wave can propagate and disturb the sensor voltage on a circuit board. Yeah, so how to suppress the impact of electromagnetic radiation on such a circuit board? I would say that uh, if we uh, encapsulate the circuit board into a box or yeah, a box of conducting metal, then almost all of the uh, electrical field uh, vector will be completely suppressed. And this is the reason also why we often see that uh, electronic equipment that are sensitive to electromagnetic radiation are often encapsulated in boxes that are made of metal. Wires that are used to connect a sensor to the input of the rest of the measurement system and amplifier input. If those wires are, are exposed to electromagnetic radiation, typically they can, be, they can cause a lot of uh, um, disturbance on the input in relation to the sensor voltage. But one way to solve the problem if if you have two a pair of wires connecting to this sensor and you twist them like the way it is shown here in the picture, then for each, each twist that we make we are also creating a corresponding uh, magnetic dipole antenna where the current is uh, virtually flowing in, in opposite, opposite direction. 
Here is one direction and here is the other direction and they are generating voltages that are uh, complementary and are, are uh, um, eliminating the total voltage. Because on this blue wire uh, from this uh, magnetic dipole antenna you will have minus the, the corresponding voltage from uh, 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 of a magnetic dipole antenna of that area divided by two uh, with the sign of minus and here you have this, the corresponding voltage but with the sign of plus so the voltage contribution from this uh, twist uh, and from this twist will uh, 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 will be eliminated it will be equal to zero and that is for the magnetic field vector because these are magnetic dipole antennas but then of course both of these wires they will also constitute to an uh, electrical dipole antenna where the voltage is equal to the electrical field vector times the length of the antenna approximately. But then if the wires are, as in this case, twisted and very close to each other, then we can assume that the, the contribution of both of these wires will be the same. So it will be generating a common mood signal uh, due to this uh, electromagnetic radiation. And we know that these common mood signals, they can be suppressed on the input of a difference amplifier. If that difference amplifier then have the enough of, of uh, bandwidth to do this uh, 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 differentiation on the input at those uh, high radio frequencies. So, uh, one can say that a twisted pair of wires constitute a series of small current loop areas. Uh, the induced voltage in each current loop is suppressed by the induced voltage of the opposite polarity in its neighbor loop. And the E field, the electrical field, induces an equal voltage uh, UE on both wires, thus a common mode signal that we can suppress in, uh, in the input amplifier if we have an, a differential input amplifier. And also if the amplifier, of course, have enough of bandwidth to do that differentiation at those, those frequencies. If you for any reason have managed to connect the ground to your measurement system in the wrong way, then you can really cause a lot of disturbance to reach the input of the, the sensors to your measurement system. And that's why I'm planning now to give you a couple of kind of rules of thumb to give you advice on how you should do the grounding. We can start with this simple picture of a, a sensor and an amplifier that are both uh, relative connected to ground. So the, the input of, of the amplifier is relative to ground and the output of the sensor is also relative to the ground. And the, the ground connections are done locally on both the sensor and the amplifier. And you can assume that they are, are separated at a quite far distance and they are connected also using this uh, um, uh, shield, shield wire. And if there are differences in the ground potential due to long distance, a voltage difference will also be added then to the sensor signal. So this is the problem in this kind of, of, of uh, setup. And I will give you some idea how you can solve this problem. So I would suggest then that you connect the ground uh, to the shield only at one end point, if the shield is also used as return current feeder, as in this case, because now we have changed to an amplifier that has a differential input. And the, the amplifier input is not uh, sensitive relative to the ground anymore. And the grounding is only done uh, at the, the ground relative output, single-ended output of this uh, uh, sensor. Mm. And then the shield will now efficiently suppress the, cas the, the capacitive coupled disturbances, but not the inductive coupled disturbances. Because there is no ground connection on this side that will allow the, the current to flow. But the thing is that since you have this differential input on the amplifier, then the difference on the, the, the ground uh, uh, on, on the, 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 the uh, location where the amplifier is located and the place where the sensor is located will be reduced due to that the, the input is measuring the difference between the two wires. Mm. And this is another way, both ends uh, of the shield can be connected to ground if an additional wire, so you you are now using like a pair of wires. Um, and it means that this shield then can uh, suppress both capacitive disturbances as also uh, uh, 
inductive coupled disturbances. And there is a differential input on the amplifier. And there is a, these two wires, one wire for signal and one wire for the return current. And the suppression would even be even better, you know, if you would have it twist a pair of wires in this case. From what we have learned about wires for signal transfer from the sensor and grounding of the shield and so on, let's say that you are planning now to use a, a pair of wires for uh, transferring of the sensor signal. And then you have a sensor that only has like one uh, wire output that is relative to the ground. And what you actually need to have is a sensor that has a two output that uh, gives a differential signal output on those two connections. So the question that I want to uh, raise now, if you have this single-ended sensor with only one wire output, how can you uh, convert the sensor output to be a, a double dual uh, line output? So have a look at this. Uh, this graph, this is a picture of a single-ended sensor and this is a picture of the differential-ended sensor. And the single-ended sensor is giving the output voltage uh, relative to the ground system. And the differential-ended sensor is giving the, the output signal on a differential mode on this pair of, of connections. Mm. And then the question comes that we need a differential ender sensor to drive a differential mode signal on a pair of wires. But how can a single ender sensor be converted into a differential ended sensor? So let's have a look at this last slide where I have shown a number of examples for conversion between single ended sensor and differential ended sensor. And all the sensors in these examples, they are passive sensors that requires external power supply uh, relative to the ground. And in the first case, uh, this one of course is single-ended then, and you, we are adding an amplifier with amplification of minus one, uh, creating a complementary output with a phase shift of 180 degrees. So then we have a, a pair of output uh, differential ended sensor. And if you really need to have a differential ended sensor where the output impedances are matched, then you could add two amplifiers, one amplifier with amplification of one and the other one with amplification of, of minus one, creating a 180 degrees phase shift between these two outputs to create a, a differential ended sensor. And in this example, uh, a, a transformer has been used. That is a very simple uh, solution. And on the uh, right upper side, uh, we have an optocoupler where there is a galvanic isolation between the primary circuit and the secondary circuit, creating a, a differential ended output on the output of this optocoupler. Or you can think of uh, a passive uh, sensor that has an external power supply, but that external power supply is not relative to the ground. It is a battery that is supplying the energy to the sensor. And in that way, you can, you can have an output from this single-ended sensor that relative to the ground will work as a, a, a differential-ended output since the, the, the local ground here is floating with respect to the system ground. So those were all examples of uh, conversion between single-ended sensor and differential uh, sensor output. Output voltages from sensors are usually small and weak and it needs a large amount of amplification on the input of the measurement system in order to, to uh, match the, the uh, signal from the sensor to the A to D converter. And this high amplification and this high sensitivity is also a danger because it can be very sensitive to the disturbances stemming from other electrical equipment and installations in the environment where you have your measurement system. So that's why this video presentation has been focused on, on the topic of EMC, electromagnetic compatibility. And I have given you a number of kind of practical rules of thumbs, how you can design your, your uh, grounding system and what you can do in order to uh, fight uh, 
uh, couple disturbances through uh, capacitance, through uh, inductance, uh, through electromagnetic radiation, and through the common impedance, and, and so on, so on. So this presentation has been kind of practical and give you some kind of guidelines how you should design your system and take great care when it comes to EMC. And I think it's important knowledge uh, in order to be able to uh, uh, design a good measurement system that can also uh, operate in, in harsh electromagnetic environments. So it has been kind of uh, uh, wonderful and great to have you here listening to me for this presentation and I just want to wish you good luck with the design of your own measurement system. See you!